Okay, so this review is going to be a little bit different from my more recent ones, whereas uh, most of the reviews I've done over the past uh, month or so have been on strictly world title fights. Uh, this one was a fight between two guys that have challenged for world titles, but lost in those challenges. But in fighting each other, I mean, these are two guys that are high, highly ranked containers in the uh, in the flyweight divisions as a whole. Um, and so the the winner of this fight between Juan Churritos Hernandez and Jesus Negrito Sylvester actually put themselves in very prime position. Um, the winner wound up being Juan Hernandez by second round knockout, by an explosive second round knockout um, over Sylvester. And he did so in pretty impressive and entertaining fashion. I mean, even though this fight was at 115 and both of these guys only challenged for titles, uh, Sylvester challenged, I believe, three times at 105 and lost, um, you know, close decisions, all three of them. And, uh, or, except the last one. The last one versus Hickey Butler was a little bit, you know, it was, a, it was a clear decision for Butler, but it was a competitive decision. I'll just say that. Uh, Juan Hernandez, on the other hand, lost a pretty close uh, but clear decision to Kazuto Yoka back when Yoka was storming through the 105-pound division and just wrecking everybody in sight. Of course, Yoka is now a three-weight champion. He won a title at 105, then 108, then 112. So Yoka's definitely doing very well. Hernandez and Sylvester fought this fight at 115, even though they're both ranked at 108 um, in the sanctioning bodies. Although I believe the WBO has uh, Hernandez ranked in... Let me see here. WBO has Juan Hernandez ranked number 9 the at 112. The IBF has Juan Hernandez ranked number 5 at 108. And the WBC has Juan Hernandez ranked number 4 at 108 and then Jesus Sylvester let me find where his ranking was Sylvester's ranked number 13 in the WBC at 105 um, which is kind of funny because Sylvester actually missed weight against uh, and he's ranked number 6 in the WBO at 105 it, and Sylvester actually had missed weight if I remember correctly against um, Hecky Butler for his 105 pound title shot and he wound up losing that by a uh, competitive decision, but he still lost. Uh, but against here, against her, I mean, in that fight, it was a 12 round decision. Um, Sylvester was never seriously hurt or anything, but pretty much the very first punch that Juan Hernandez landed on him hurt him. Juan Hernandez is a very, uh, he's a very, you know, flashy, skilled, speedy fighter. He's a he's a short guy. He's five two and a half as opposed to Sylvester who's five four. So I mean he was at a height and a reach disadvantage. But Hernandez is so quick that he's able to close the distance and he's able to use a lot of feints to feint like he's about to jump in. And Sylvester would take the bait, try to counter the feint and then Hernandez would counter the counter. Particularly with very, very sharp um like shooting like up jabs and with sharp left hooks. He would almost do kinda like uh Brother Nazim Richardson would say to Hopkins where he'd say, short Joe Lewis, wipe his nose with that hook. That's pretty much what Hernandez was doing to Sylvester repeatedly. It's like he would he would kind of duck down like he was going to throw the hook. He'd watch um, he'd watch Sylvester's hands move to the side, and then he'd, he would actually throw himself completely into the hook and rock Sylvester like halfway across the ring. He dropped him three times in the two rounds. And every time he landed, he appeared to really badly affect him just because of the explosiveness and because of the, just like the velocity at which he was throwing the punches. Because Hernandez isn't really a um, thudding puncher. He's a sharp, you know, explosive puncher. He's the guy that, he's one of those guys that catches you by surprise at a crazy angle and uh, and hurts you. I mean, even against Yoka, Yoka's a guy with an excellent chin and he was able to rock Yoka pretty badly a couple of times. He didn't drop him, but he knocked him across the ring a couple of times with some of those crazy shots. And uh, Juan Hernandez is apparently supposedly now in possible talks to fight Roman Gonzalez next. Um, I mean, he'd be a little bit of a short notice opponent now that we're really coming to crunch time before Her Gonzalez's next fight. I mean, two months, I mean, that's, a, that's enough time for a full camp, of course, especially since Hernandez dispatched of Sylvester in just a couple rounds. You know, it's not, that's not too long of a workout, you know, less than, less than six minutes, right? Seven minutes. Um, so... I mean, he did his job, and um, I mean, hopefully for his sake, he gets the fight. I think he would actually be a very interesting opponent, though, too, because of the speed dynamic. You know, it's a speed dynamic that Gonzalez hasn't faced in at least a few fights. I mean, there's a few guys that have really good hand speed. I mean, Valoria has good hand speed and everything.
but he doesn't necessarily have that hand speed combined with foot speed the way that Hernandez does. Hernandez, he switch hits, you know, he'll turn southpaw, he'll turn orthodox, he'll do it kind of at random times. He'll do like a little bit of an ollie shuffle before he switch hits, you know, kind of like keep you guessing at which, you know, which stance he's going to wind up in. And he'll throw shots and then, you know, he'll kind of um do that switching thing where it's like he'll be in an orthodox position, throw the right hand, and then he'll just stay in the southpaw position and th throw the left hand. He closes distance like that. And that's a very clever thing that he does, especially with how quick he is. He's able to close distance on taller opponents very fast. Albeit, Gonzalez isn't really much taller than him, maybe about an inch. So that isn't necessarily the biggest uh, liability there. Um, if anything, the, just the liability would be the fact that sometimes he kind of lunges in, and that could definitely put him at risk for... Some nasty counters that are that'll be coming from Gonzalez, especially the overhand right. But uh, Hernandez, I think, is a very live opponent. Albeit, I don't think 112 is really his best rate. I think the other most of the sanctioning bodies have him rated at 108, really for a reason. And uh, here against Sylvester at 115, you could tell. I mean, just looking at his body, compare him in this fight to when he fought Denver Cuello. You can look up the his fight against Denver Cuello here on YouTube where he fought Denver Cuello, or even Kazuto Yoko, but the Cuello fight's a little bit clearer. It's a clearer video. And um, you could tell there's a big difference in his body, you know. Uh, at, at 105 and 108, it doesn't even look like he really has to cut water to make the weight. It just looks like he's lean. You know, he's just, just a, a, got a lean, muscular build. At 115, he definitely he has, like, he has the dad bod, as, you know, as people have been calling it online the last year or two, where, you know, he, he's just flat. You know, it's like you don't really see any muscle definition. He's kind of a little chubby. Um, so 115 definitely isn't his weight, um, 112 even, isn't even necessarily, but the thing is he's athletic enough and, um, fast enough that it seems like it's not necessarily a liability, although I would say that it would be a liability at the very elite level, you know, against guys like Yoka, against guys like Chocolatito, guys that are naturally a, just a tad bigger and significantly stronger than him, so... Um, he'd be a, an interesting opponent for Chocolatito, so if that fight happens, I mean, I wouldn't be mad at it. I think he's definitely a better opponent than Segura because he brings a, a, a different kind of physical dynamic and he's a fresher fighter for it, too. You know, I mean, he just blew out uh, a fellow title challenger in two rounds. I mean, he did it a hell of a lot more impressively than Butler did, albeit at a higher weight. But even still, I mean, just the fact that he was able to adjust uh, to being a, a bit flabby and still look as dynamic as he did is something that a lot of fighters, you know, they're not able to do. Some guys, you know, they gain maybe two pounds of fat and all of a sudden they look like a completely different person in the ring for whatever reason. It's pretty crazy. But, I mean, props to Hernandez for this. And, I mean, this fight was short but sweet, so enjoy it. Peace.